What's up gamers, Jim here and welcome to my version of the Stadia ABK teardown of 2.26. Let's just begin shall we? Mobile network gaming is coming to Stadia and it looks like it may be a feature that you'll need to enable in the experimental mode. And also it looks like that you'll be able to play at 480p max while on mobile network. Of course this may change in the future and to be honest I think it will. So why is it 480p then? Well, there are two reasons that I can think of. One of them is simply mobile data limits. It's possible that Google doesn't want you to accidentally go past your mobile data. Of course, there are companies and countries out there that offer unlimited data and that is the norm. I'm sure Google is aware of that and this is purely just for testing and just the start of mobile network gaming. The second reason I can think of is that 480p is low in bandwidth and the majority of us are using 4G mobile networks. Well, 480p is going to give the player a smooth experience and I think that's what Google wants the most. I think they want to start small and make sure the experience is nailed for the low quality mode before moving forward. Also, time is on Google's side here because 5G is, isn't everywhere. Moving on to demos, I found a string that specifically mentions demos under Stadia Pro. I can't really say more than that, but if you can focus on the string itself and you can see that it says content that is for pro members only. So we will get things like demos, DLCs, bundles, games that are only for pro members. I also found free weekends being mentioned and even though this specific street doesn't say it's for Stadia Pro only. I did find this under the Stadia Pro lines of codes so do what you will with that. I'm just going to quickly cover these two parental control related strings and get it over with. Before I do, I do want to say that I have never touched on parental controls because I'm not a parent so I actually don't know what's new and what's not and I do apologize if, if these are not new. There is a button called ask to play. This is basically where your child will click the button and then I assume you'll get a notification of some sort perhaps on your mobile or email that asks for your permission if your child can play the game that they requested. Then there's further evidence of parents being able to set time limits on how long your child can play a game. There were a lot more parental control strings but like I said I don't know what's new or not and I thought these ones could be worth a mention. Chat. Let's chat shall we? <laughs> so text chat is mentioned. There is a section that mentions that you need to verify your account before you can invite friends and chat. Of course, chat could just mean voice chat, but then I found that you can do text chat in parties. I also found the section for chat history. Not that exciting, but at least you know Google is working on text chat and now we know text chat will also work in parties. So, uh, sorry, <laughs> should we cover family sharing now or YouTube streaming? Okay, let's just start with family sharing. <laughs> There's a function to enable family sharing. You can also specifically choose which games to share. So you don't have to share your entire library if you do not want to. However, it doesn't look like you have the option to specifically choose who to share to. It will automatically share with your entire Google family. I also found this string that says you have reached the maximum number of family members that can play at the same time. The wording here is interesting. It could mean that you just ran out of people to add family sharing to or it could be a message you get when you want to play a family shared game but it says you have reached the limit. If it is the latter then that would mean the maximum number is not one specifically. It could work like a license system instead. For example, let's say you have five family members all sharing their games. You have A and B who own Division 2 but family members C and D want to play Division 2 together. They don't own the game but they are being shared from A and B. So this family in total owns two copies of Division 2. So, that, so does that mean 
C and D can actually play Division 2 together because there are two licenses of Division 2 in the family sharing in total even though C and D don't own the titles. This is just my speculation on how I understand this string. Okay, let's move to YouTube streaming. <laughs> you can link your YouTube channel to your Stadia account for live streaming. Nowhere does it mention that it has to be part of the same Google account because one Google account can have multiple YouTube channels. It looks like you sign into the Google account uh, instead of YouTube. Again, I'm not sure if the Google account needs to be the same as your Stadia one, but it doesn't mention that. All I can see here is that you sign into your Google account and then you will be provided with a list of YouTube channels to choose from that are assigned to the Google account. There will also be a feature where you can manage your live stream while streaming. You can also set your live stream to be public or private or unlisted. You can also have an overlay that shows you how many people are watching your live stream. You can also view the live stream link. I assume this is if you need to announce your live stream on Twitch or Twitter. Uh, I mean, what did I say Twitch? I mean Discord or Twitter or other social media. And the link is right there ready to be copied. And finally, you have the option to choose if you want to use Crowdplay only for members of your channel. It is unclear if members mean subscribers or the literal YouTube membership feature where people can be members on your YouTube channel. Now the rest of the strings I found are uncategorized by me for this video. We have found, uh, sorry, we have further evidence that capture sharing is coming and it looks like you can actually set a permanent link for your captures to be viewed to the public. This next one I found is quite interesting. The section where you can choose if you're online or busy. There's another option coming and it's called looking for party. This will indicate that you are looking for a party to play games with. People will see this indicator on their friend list under your name. So this next one is another one where the wording is a bit off and I don't understand it clearly. It says multiple browsers can be connected to play the same cooperative mode. To me this sounds like there's a feature for local multiplayer where your friends can just use other devices to play cooperative mode with you. But again the wording is really unclear here so I'm also trying to be realistic here and thinking maybe multiple browsers just means if you and your friend own the same game then you can just play together just like a normal game. There will be a notification setting that will allow you to get the latest updates in Stadia and also you can choose if you want a push notification to your phone. There is also a notification summary page. I assume this is where you get to see all your notification history or it's just a text area on the notification. And finally, the last string I found is the ability to watch YouTube videos on your Chromecast while playing games. This is not picture in picture, this is just going on YouTube when you're gaming and then you simply just turn on your Stadia controller again to get back into your game. This string mentions that you can use your phone to watch and control YouTube on your Chromecast. Thank you for watching my video, this is Jem and I'll see you in the next one.